Hi and a welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole and today we are here for my weekly stitch with me. We're working on the popsicle stand. Yes, we're on to the next block. So let's get started. no matter where you're watching from thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while we get some stitches into our cross stitch so if you haven't already done so grab a cuppa grab your cross stitch if you're working on snow village grab that out too and put some stitches in it so let's get stitching all right so we are here to stitch on the snow village um, that's what it looks like a little bit closer we're doing the popsicle cart I call it the popsicle stand but anyway <laughs> it is what it is so that's what it's going to look like we've got some stitches in this week and um we're going to continue on with that so um you can see that i've done a little bit of mapping out again and it just makes it a little bit easier when i'm on camera um we're going to be working with cherry tomato by classic color works today and also white and the color that is in this one particular one is blank in the dmc whites all right so i've just got to thread my needle up and i'll just move those needles out of the way and grab my needle threader so i'm not all thumbs well happy monday everybody another working week is upon us again uh, that as we continue to go around and around the mulberry bush and um yeah so i've got a fair bit on this week oh, i just unthreaded that <laughs> got a fair bit on this week um i've got a few quilts to get done <clears throat> sort of I'm, I'm starting to feel a lot better than i was last week which is good i'm um, still fairly tired but um other than that i'm doing okay so let's just move this a little bit closer so i can stitch it <clears throat> and um I've still got a bit of a croaky voice, which is unfortunate, but there's not much I can really do about that. Unfortunately, I just have to wait for it to clear itself. Hopefully that'll be sooner rather than later. We've got a few things happening this week on the channel. We'll be continuing on with all our regular segments, the so Crafting with DDs. I'm slowly getting my hexagons sewn together. I've got them sitting in the lounge room. So every time I sit down to watch TV with... Brendan, I have my borrow in there and I also have, I just need to move this out of the way, also have my hexagons in there. Um, so hopefully no one will touch them. My layout is there. I've got some more done on that, which is exciting. Uh, what else have I been doing this week? Oh, I've started reading again. I've found, um, I'm still slow going, like I still feel really tired. So as soon as I start reading, I want to go to sleep. <laughs> so that's not really helping. Um, but I've started reading again uh, this week and um, I'm about halfway through a book at the moment and um, it's actually a pretty hard go on reading it and um, you'll be able to see the full review of that on Dusty Book Sniffers um, probably in a couple of weeks because I am very much behind with my reviews and I've got them all sitting on shelf and because um, I did get quite a few books read <coughs> excuse me, prior to getting COVID but I didn't get a chance to review them so I um, have to review those and um, they're all sitting there in a nice little pile and I know that one of my um, bookish friends uh, I'm friends with online and she visits us here all the time um, she's waiting on a couple of the books to be sent to her so I've got to get my finger out and get them reviewed my voice is sounding so much better today so I'm hoping that if not this week, it will definitely be next week because it they're like it's a lot of talking and there's a lot of videos that have got to be done. So I don't want to overtax my my voice. So I'll probably like it is still a bit croaky and like it's very dry and so um and scratch like it's hard to explain, but it feels scratchy like like it's itchy <laughs> and I don't know how you scratch a throat because. <laughs> it's on the inside and um 
yeah so basically I'm just sort of taking it easy I just I'm uh, sucking on lo lozenges and whatnot to just make sure that I don't overdo it on my voice or anything like that so hopefully if not this week I'll um it'll definitely be next week I'll start recording because as I said um you know from it's been two weeks today since um I had my positive test and I'm now testing negative so um which is good and I do feel a lot better than I did last week um still tired still very tired and um but I'm trying not to I'm trying not to get into the habit of having an afternoon nap uh, rather just sit down and do nothing for half an hour or 45 minutes um in the lounge room without the TV or anything on just you know just shut down for a, a, a spell uh, as opposed to having a sleep because if I have a sleep I end up going to sleep for like three hours or something like that and then I'm not getting to bed till late because I can't get back to sleep so I'm trying to break that pattern of having that afternoon nap again so it's going to be a bit of a uh, fun and games I'd say for the next couple of weeks now, where's my cherry tomato strand gone? There it is. In my little bird's nest that I've created over here. All right. I picked up all my threads in a bundle and I set them on the table. <laughs> it just looked like a big bird's nest over there now. <coughs> um, I'm still coughing. Not as much as well. That seems to have subsided a lot in the last couple of days. Like... On Saturday, um, I was still coughing a lot. Like there was a couple of breaks in my video that um, I did where I had, like I literally had a coughing fit and had to edit that out. And um, my nose is a lot drier today too. Like it's, um, even like as I said, even on Saturday, I was still quite congested. And so, so far so good. I feel good. I feel good so far. I had to, had to laugh to myself last week where I was all excited that I was finished and no one pointed it out. So I don't think any of you guys seen it either, but I had forgot to do the uh, second leg of the cross on the snow, on the garland on this one. <laughs> and I was doing this one, um, Oh, as I was working on this one, I went, oh, I haven't done that. I better do that or I'll end up forgetting. I would have, had I not been here doing that garland, I probably would have ended up doing the whole thing, finishing, do, doing an FFO and have that not done. <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. And you'll have to excuse my squeaky chair. I might actually just pop it down just a touch. That usually stops it from squeaking. No. <laughs> I have a very squeaky chair, so I'll have to stay very, very still. Oh, so we're into full swing of uh, uh, sample September. Little bit, start again. <laughs> a bit befuddled there. We are into full swing of um, sampler September, and I've been uh, posting updates on the community tab here on my progress, so you can see that happening as well. Um, I'm actually really enjoying it. Like, uh, I'm really, really enjoying getting some stitches into those samplers. Um, for the most part this week so far, I have uh, only worked on the uh, Janet Irving one, which is a Jean Farish um, design. And um, I'm hoping tonight that um, I will get some stitches into... I don't know, I just couldn't... I couldn't stop working on it. So, um, yeah... I um I put a fair few stitches in it and while well, you know watching a little bit of floss tube and and whatnot but um yeah I'm I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made on that for the first week but I am moving on to Huckleberry Farm is in the hoop so I will be working on that a little bit today I was going to work on it last night but I didn't get to it I ended up just um relaxing and done, I was doing some hexagons know why my seat all of a sudden is squeaking it wasn't squeaking yesterday so yeah so I'm pretty happy with the progress that I'm making on those and 
put, I'll do two stitching sessions on, um, where's three snips gone there now. Um, I'll do two stitching sessions on the blue flower and then, um, I will move on to the, um, Bristol, Bristol, um, sampler that I have, which, um, is not an original. It is a inspired by, so, um, and I'm doing it in a purple, which you would have seen on my floss tube on Friday. So other than that, I haven't really been doing anything. I'm just, you know, catching up on housework because, let's face it, no one cleans the house around here. So I've been catching up on housework, which that means that gets in the way of my, um, in the way of, uh, getting any stitches in unfortunately all right so i'm just going to pop that there for now and i'm going to get my white and continue on oh i've actually got a huge week this week i'm all, almost like need to take a nap just because of the workload i've got this week I, um, it's the first week of the month so the first week of the month is always really hectic for me because i like to get a lot of my um, filming done so a lot of my tutorials get done this week and um, and then I've got the other ones like my um, my daily videos as well that I've also got to film this week um, but that's sort of every week because it's part of my job now like it's it's in my rotation of work stuff that I have to do um, so yeah so I've got on top of that I've also got the um, tutorials and I like to get the tutorials out of the way in the first week because then like I don't necessarily edit them um although I am checking them now because of what happened with the row by row I still can't explain that I cannot explain why those videos were corrupted because it hasn't happened since I've updated my phone so I'm wondering if um they well I updated it prior to um filming those those videos and it was fine and I had no problem and then I updated after I filmed those videos but I think I, I'm sure that they were fine because everything else has been fine and not all the videos were corrupted that I had filmed around that time so I'm not entirely sure what happened whether it was in the transfer like from the phone to the computer I'm not 100% sure needless to say it hasn't happened again um, and I am checking them though um, instead of just doing a, a dump and run because normally what I do is I film and dump them off and then go back to filming again because my phone can only um, you know hold so much especially video HD video so yeah so normally what I do is I film and do a dump and run and so and that means just filming and getting it off the camera and not even bothering to check them and all the rest of it but oh, lesson learned because now I'm chasing my tail and um trying to get things fixed and and all the rest of it and you know that was my own fault I should have checked them and I would have known weeks ago and it wouldn't have been a problem um and then you know getting sick as well didn't help matters that's pushed me back two weeks as well and um so now I'm sort of chasing my tail trying to get them done and um get everything sorted so that's why I like to um film a lot of stuff because then if you know something's not quite right it gives me time before I've got a scheduled video to go up so you know my daily videos where I'm doing the stitch with me the crafting with DDs floss tube um and even slow stitching Saturday well um Saturday's video didn't go up until the afternoon uh, till the evening because my neighbors who you probably just heard their car star hopefully you didn't because the, the microphone's pretty good at isolating um sound but um, they were revving their car all morning and it was super, super loud. And then we've had motorbikes going all weekend as well down at the showground. So that added on to it as well. They had finished early yesterday because I, I think that the time, because they finished about three on Sunday as well. So um, I ended up having to, like I filmed it when it was relatively quiet after my neighbour had finished and um, I'd done a little test and you couldn't hear the motorbike so I just 
you know, I um, just started filming and, and thought, sort of hope for the best. But yeah, and now it's all quiet again because, you know, it's the weekday, everybody's at work, except my neighbour's noisy car. And it's not, it doesn't even sound good. Like, <laughs> I don't think it sounds good. <laughs> My husband doesn't think it sounds good either. So, yeah. But that's just the joys of living in suburbia and trying to work around everything. Sometimes you've just got to work around your neighbours. The best one is I've got an old guy that lives next door, and um, he has a he has two cars. And he only drives one of them on a daily basis and the other one's like a weekend uh, it's a Land Rover or something. So every second day he gets out and starts it and lets it idle and then the fumes from the bloody car come into the house if I've got the windows open on that side. So I've got to quickly go and shut all the windows on that side of the house while he sits there and idles his car for five minutes, which doesn't do the car any good really he'd be better off just taking the battery out and siphoning the fuel out of it and be done then that way if the fuel there's no because what happens is the fuel will go off and um but that's like that's that's got a fairly long shelf life but the fuel will go off and it'll turn like to jelly in the um carburetor and stuff like that because it's an old land rover so that's why he goes out and starts it and then lets it idle but just take the battery out, sorry from the fuel out. If you're not going to drive it, sell the thing. Like, not that I can talk. Like, we've got a few cars in our driveway. <laughs> but we don't go out and start them. We just take the batteries out. We don't siphon the fuel either, though. But they usually don't hang around that long. They usually get end up getting started and moved up the backyard or something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> For the most part, I've got great neighbours, except for the ones, <laughs> the ones across the road. And you guys hardly ever hear it, but they, there's some issues over there. And, oh, mate, they go off. They go off. And we've always had the, the, the lottery with those, those neighbours. It's a, um, it's a, like a housing commission place, but it's not housing commission. Um, it's called community housing. And so... Yeah, so we get some lovely people that live in there. <laughs> We've always had good entertainment from them. Some always fun and games. <clears throat> Although these these ones are a hell of a lot better than the last two. Whew. The last two sets. Oh boy. So we've had... Um, well, actually the last three sets because we've had three sets of neighbours over there since we moved here the house was built um it was getting built when we moved into our house um it was just i think it was about halfway through and at the end of that year the first tenants moved in and we've been here since 2011 so yeah it must have been the end of 2011 that the first neighbors moved in and um Old Dawn and her Aussie love story. <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh, it's it, it, yeah. I can't tell that story on here because it involves lots of stuff, lots of swearing, and and you can't tell that story without the swearing, um, because that's what tells the Aussie love story. <laughs> and the. Uh, the girls that I um, have meet up, met up with regularly, they they know about that that story, so they're probably having a bit of a chuckle to themselves right now. Sorry, everybody else that's left out of the loop, but it's not PG <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's definitely R-rated. Have to get some WD-40 onto my chair, squeaky thing. Oh, so quiet today. Everybody's at work. Definitely a workaholic household, I tell you. I don't think we could all sit still even if we tried. I'll tell you what, I'm a little bit over white. 
so over it. But I guess it's called Snow Village. <laughs> so. I don't know. It just, I don't know. It just looks messy all the time. A struggle. The struggle is real. Even when I've done like, you know when you do the railroad where you like, you put it between and all that sort of stuff. Even then, like, it um, still looks messy. So I'll just have to resign to the fact that. But then overall, like when you look at it overall, there's only maybe one or two that after you've finished stitching it, like this, it, it ends up looking okay. Like there's one there. But am I going to unpick it? No, because I'm going to cover it with with stuff anyway. But um, it just frustrates me because, like, it's just the same floss that I'm using and yet it always looks so messy. What is that? Is it an op optical illusion maybe? Like, because the light hits, hits the white colour a little bit differently. Maybe. Who knows? Oh. <sighs> The dilemmas of cross stitch. First world problems right there, eh? Alright, so leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you're working on today. Are you doing cross stitch or are you doing another craft? I know that we have um, a couple of people that do knitting while I'm prattling on. So I was supposed to watch Gone Girl this week, uh, this past week, and I did. I forgot all about it. And then I looked at my to-do list and went, Oh, I was supposed to watch that. Obviously, it's too late to watch it now. So, I'm, uh, it's it's moved to the top of my list, and then I will do a comparison um, between the book and um, and the movie. And there's a couple of other ones that um, I'm going to do, like I'm going to read the books and then uh, watch the, the movie or the TV series, and and just compare it. The next one that I'll be doing will be, um, oh, is it Paula Hawkins, Girl on a Train? That was a really good book. I thoroughly enjoyed that book. So I'm hoping that the movie will be just as good. Um, and of course, you know, I have to make sure that they're, the, the reason I'm saying them, because I'm saying them to, to my device and then hopefully they'll magically appear. <laughs> on my streaming services uh, so last week when I talked about the stitch uh, the gift of stitching um did it appear in your like I I cracked up because I actually said on the video as soon as I get off this video I guarantee you it will appear in my news feed and sure enough I went in because someone sent me a message I went in to check messenger and I opened up Facebook because I don't go through the messenger app I just go through Facebook and um and sure enough the first ad that came up on my news feed was the gift of stitching I had to I had a bit of a chuckle so um, I'm hoping with the magic of my phone and um, the algorithm of Netflix and Stan and Prime and whatever other streaming services there are out there that it will magically appear on my homepage. Um, I believe that they are both on Netflix. So um, I'll have to double check that. But um, hopefully through the magic of me just saying it, It'll appear because I went looking for memoirs of a geisha and I could not find it on any streaming services except for Prime. And it was to buy the um, and I'm so glad that I didn't buy it like, not buy to rent the um, movie. And um, I know it's only five bucks, but still, that was not worth five dollars that movie. Um, so anyway. And then Viv, um, one of my sub um, subscribers and followers over on Instagram, she sent me a message. She went, hey, I did a Google search and it came up on Stan. Now, I checked Stan the week before and it was not there because um, I have Stan. And then, like, within a week, it, all of a sudden it was there. And it was like, what the heck? <laughs> so I'm hoping with some little magic of me saying it and um, it'll, you know, and then... Hey, see the motorbikes? They live up the road and they do that all the time. One of the guys has no respect. One of the other guys has respect. 
and he starts his bike and at five o'clock in the morning when he goes to work, he must work at the mines or something, and all you hear is <laughs> going down the road and then he gets into First Avenue and there's not many houses in First Avenue and then he gets up near, like he can tell, like I can tell where he's at, but yeah, one of them does that, what well, you just heard then, and that, and you're, you're actually getting the muffled sound of it. It is so freaking loud. It actually, I can feel the vibration I, when he's coming down um, First Avenue. I can hear him. And then as he goes past my house, I can feel the vibration in of the sound in my feet on the floor. That's how loud it is. And they've also got loud cars as well. But, you know, like... I don't care that they've got loud things. It's just like when I'm recording people, I need to have a, like a flashing sign, <laughs> you know, like a recording studio, you know, when you go, I don't, well, I used to do, I was in the music industry for a little while and I used to go to a recording studio and when they were recording, they had a light out there outside the, the, um, like when you went to, it was in a house and <clears throat> the house was two story and underneath the house they had, um, they had built a recording studio uh, for musicians and doing ads and all that sort of stuff. And it was up in the, um, it was down in Wollongong. I lived in Wollongong at the time and it was up in the uh, escarpment. So they were up um, the back like of um, anybody that knows Wollongong, um, like near, between um, Bulleye and um, Coromel, like those up in that, that area. There's um, the foot hit like at the bottom of the the escarpment, and um, yeah. So anyway, he had a house up in there. Like it, it was really hard to get to, and all the rest of it. And it was super super quiet up there. And when you get there, there's like this. If there was they were doing a recording session or anything like that, when you got there, there was a light outside his house that had recording written on it. And um, so basically, you knew not to knock on the door or anything like that. And, you, and there was a little waiting like a would have been a sunroom but they turned it into like a waiting room and um that way you just sat there and you were, had to be quiet and and whatnot but um yeah that was a lot of fun when I, I worked for a magazine or it was actually like a um, street press so anybody that's in New South Wales um you probably remember um drum media well, the Illawarra had the Illawarra Pulse and I used to work for them back in the early 90s. And, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a great, great time. Well, it wasn't early 90s, it was probably mid-90s. How old was I? It was just before I come to Queensland, so it would have been about 24, 20, no, 25 I would have been because um, it was after I left my partner, so, yeah. Um, wasn't a bad gig that one got to see a lot of bands live and all that sort of stuff it was great got to know about the bands that are co back then like well, uh, Wollongong's always had a pretty good music scene anyway but back then uh, there was it was humping along so um, I've seen some pretty big bands in um, like Aussie bands and stuff in in Wollongong and the Shell Arbor Workers and Port Campbell Leagues Club and um, North Kong Hotel used to get a lot of local bands and stuff like that as well. And then I moved to Queensland. And yeah. And a lot of my friends were musicians as well and all were very heavily into the, the music scene so It was a um, interesting time. Yeah. But that's what I need out the front. I need a big flashing sign so my neighbours know I'm recording. Shut up. <laughs> do you reckon they'll appreciate it? Or do you reckon they'll get louder? Could do an experiment. <laughs> and see what happens. I don't think the motorbike guys are going to care one way or another.
And I don't think the lady across the road will care one way or another when she's yelling out at her kids. Gosh, she yells. It used to be worse. She used to have um, a son living with her. And um, oh, she was always out there calling. <laughs> and um, he's no longer living with her. He's with his dad now. And hopefully he's doing a lot better because those two together weren't a good mix. They just rubbed each other the wrong way. Big time. And my other neighbours... Oh, years ago we had these neighbours that lived on the... Um, not on on the old guy's side, on the other side of our house. Um, and they were chronic complainers. So if... Brendan parked his car, like his truck, our road's really narrow. And if you park on the road, it essentially turns the road into a one lane, you know. And we've had people that have come here, like when I was doing classes here and stuff like that, I've had people go out and their mirrors have been knocked off and stuff like that. So I used to say to the ladies, just park up on the lawn, just don't drive on the next door neighbor's driveway to get to our lawn. Like, I don't care, it's grass, it grows back. Anyway, but oh, they were so adamant that people were driving on there. And they weren't. It was just that they wanted to complain. And, um, yeah, and he complained and complained. Like, basically, they, their wife, um, oh, like, it got ridiculous in the end. They rang the council every day. And complained every every single day about Brendan parking his truck on our driveway. You know, he's come home for lunch and he's parked his truck. So they rang the council. Even if he parked it on the driveway. If he parked it on the road, they complained about it. If he parked it on the grass, they complained about it. If I had ladies coming here for classes, they'd complain about it. And that, like, they, they tried everything at one <laughs> stage. Um, so... Brennan's a truck driver, but he's also a qualified um, forestry firefighter. So um, he hasn't done it for a very long time, but <laughs> he is the he's the one that they send in to light the forest up to do green burning. So before the fire season and stuff like that. <laughs> and he used to say, he goes, I feel like a naughty little boy. I've been let off into the forest with petrol and... <laughs> You know, it's not, but it's it. They use a um a lighter, like a, a special equipment to light up the fires and stuff like that. And he also used to do the back burning on our property out at um out at Jurong. And so, <laughs> like, he's unbelievable. Like he gets this wall of, and it's cool burning. Like it's not a hot burn. And anyway, the next door neighbours that used to live there. I've just lost my needle. Was this one? I've dropped a needle because I had three here and now I only have two. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. But anyway, they, um, as I said, they were ringing the, um, the council every day. Like, I would stand outside, Brennan would get in the car to take the kids to school and I would hear her on her back veranda going, they've started the car again. And I'd be standing there going, like, I wouldn't get into it because I'm not a person to make, like, I don't want to make it worse. You get into it with people, it just makes it worse. So I just ignored it and I just thought, you crazy lady. Anyway, <laughs> um, they basically, as I said, rang every day and it was a complaint of very indifferent natures, nature, but mostly about, excuse me, about my husband and his truck. Anyway, then um, when, at the time we had some, this was before we had the workshop, so we had some of our collector cars in the backyard as well. Now, they're not the most attractive thing to to look at and, and whatnot, but I tell you, these people complained and complained and complained. The funniest day was when they complained to Workplace Health and Safety and said that we were running a mechanics workshop out of our backyard, which we weren't. Um, 
And the people that turned up from workplace health and safety, one was into quilting and the other guy was into cars. So he's come into the yard and seen the Jag with the blown motor and all the collector cars and all the rest of it. And he was walking, he didn't give it, he did not care if we were running a business or not. He was walking around looking at all the cars. He thought it was like the best day ever at work. And the girl, the lady that was with him was right into quilting. So she's, and I had a class on at the time when they turned up. So she's in here talking to, to all of us about quilting and all the rest of it. He's out there looking at all the cars and all the rest. And then we've gone out like and then we've gone out to meet up with him because he's gone and done he's supposed to be checking to see if we had a business here or not right and <laughs> so then I'm out there and I know nothing about cars I know I do know a bit because you can't live with Brendan and not know something so anyway I'm out there talking to him about cars and also talking about like weirdest conversation ever to be talking about cars and quilting in the same conversation because the two people that are standing in front of me are, uh, and mind you, they the neighbours were standing on their back veranda and I, I they didn't realise that I had seen them. And um, so we were standing there talking and having a bit of a laugh and, you know, talking about the cars and then talking about the quilting and having a joke about, hell yeah, this is such a thriving business. Because they were here for like an hour and a half. And if we had a business, a mechanics business, don't you think some customers would have turned up? I think so. And um, they even said that, like they said, oh, look, we're not going to take any more complaints from them, rah, rah, rah. So that that was fine. Brendan, mind you, this was all happening while Brendan was working away. Um, he used to do two weeks on, two weeks off, and he, it was his two weeks on out at the um, gas fields. And anyway, he rings up and he came into service that afternoon. So he done his, you know, his ring in to see how everything was going and, and stuff like that. For the most part, he found out what was going on in the house through Facebook because I used to put up a lot of posts. I don't really do that anymore because he's home, so he gets to see the girls all the time. And, um, yeah, so anyway, I told him all about it and I said, and he goes, oh, no, what, are you all right? Like, what happened? What are we going to do? And I said, nothing. I said, I don't know who's looking out for us, but not that we weren't doing anything wrong. We weren't – I didn't actually have a business. The only business that is – from this house is my business and it's a legal business from uh, from the house got all the permits and all the rest of it so like <laughs> there's nothing that that you can do if you've got all the permits anyway um I said you're not going to believe this he goes what I said the guy that came here they said it was a guy and a chick that came here and he goes oh yeah and I said the guy was into and he goes quilting I'm like no he was right in the cars he was going right over your um blown jag and um if you want to see any of the the crap that Brendan has you can head over to King A Toe um crew it's King A Toe one word crew that's his um his YouTube and he, he hasn't been putting videos up lately because we're doing stuff over at the the workshop and it's just a mess and it's just too hard and he's been incredibly busy as well <clears throat> on top of that. But um, he puts up a video every now and again. Uh, just be warned, he's not PC. <laughs> so you may be offended if you watch stuff because, like, yeah, it's Brendan. But anyway, um, <laughs> let's see the heat all there. He's a funny dude and he's, he's yeah, <clears throat> he likes um, his cars and he's very passionate about his cars and all the rest of it. So anyway... I was um, telling him about the guy that come in. It was going over your blown jag and all the rest of it. And he loved it. And I said, and the chick that come here was into quilting. <laughs> and he goes, are you for real? I'm like, I, just, I am telling the God's honest truth. They were into quilting and cars. And uh, yeah, we're not running a business from here. They could see that. They didn't care. Anyway, they, um, they left. And then I think it was a week later, he was home and... Um, we're out in the yard and we're fluffing around in the yard, you know, moving this, moving that. Um, I can't, I think we were mowing the lawns and stuff like that. Anyway, the, the fire brigade turns up and they had had a complaint that our backyard was a fire hazard. <laughs> so anyway, they're here and then the, I th I'm pretty sure the, the head of the King Arroy um, forestry turned up as well. Um, 
because I think he does, I, I can't remember exactly who he is, but anyway, I think Brendan knew him. All I could hear was, like, I was in here, I didn't know that they had turned up, and then, um, I, yeah, he was out in the yard, I was in here doing something, I heard someone out there, I thought it was just some dudes talking about car, turns up, it turns out it was the fire brigade, and it turns out that he actually knew them, and then they've come, so again, I've walked out and go, oh, hi, how you going? Nice to meet you. You know, by this stage, we're meeting every government department in King Arroy. And um, anyway, they've gone off and they've walked around the yard and all the rest of it. Then they're shaking hands and leaving. But as I was coming back in, I noticed that they were standing on their back veranda. And um, they were get you could see, you could see on their faces that they were peeved because they weren't getting the desired result. Anyway, this went on for so long. The council would turn up here every three weeks, come and check it and all that sort of stuff. Like the, How these people didn't get labelled menaces is beyond me. The final straw, um, which I really got irked about, was I was in the gym. I've got a gym in the backyard, which I haven't been using for a long time, and I'm trying to get back to it, get, develop those habits to get back to it. And every time I went out into the gym... And I'm talking 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning in summer and about 6, 6.30 in winter. Every time I went out into the, the gym, he would hear me open the door because it's in a shed, so you'd hear the door open. And then he'd be on his veranda or then he'd be walking his dog around the backyard and walking along the fence and looking in. So <laughs> Brendan, um, being at this stage, he was just starting to um, start up his towing business and, and all that sort of stuff. And like, well, he was already doing it, but he was actually starting to ramp it up. He needed some storage. So he went and seen a friend that gets a lot of um, old trucks in it. You know, those Pentax trucks, like they've got the canopies on the back and stuff like that. Some of them have taut liners, which are the the um, vinyl sides on them. And then others are like little delivery vans that have the Pentax on the, the back. Well, he ended up getting, through his friend... Um, a few of those and we've got two of them and he put them in front of the gym so he couldn't see <laughs> so that that put a chink in his little wagon and because it was creepy like it was so creepy and he was lurking like he wasn't accidentally looking over the fence at me in the gym he was lurking near the fence and it was making me very uneasy so Brennan solved that problem and so they complained about that and because they're not a permanent structure, they don't actually need a permit to go into the yard. There's no infrastructure to it or anything. They literally can have a forklift go underneath them, pick them up and move them. All right. And so they, you don't need a permit for them. Now, I'm not advocating that you go out and do this in your yard because it may, may make your uh, neighbours not very happy with you. So anyway, it didn't make our neighbours very happy. And like I get, our backyard does not look the best. It's not very pleasing. But who in their right mind, okay, when you've got a two-story house, puts in, and you moved into the house knowing that they, because they moved in after us, right? And you knew that our backyard was like that because it's always been like that. And then you proceed to put huge sliding doors on the back of your house so you have no alternative but to look at it. And then you put a veranda that is two foot above our fence line and um, looking directly into our yard, okay? So I'm like, interesting. So then he started to stand on his veranda and look out over the yard and all the rest of it. And then one day, Neralee and I were in the backyard and he was staring, like staring us down. And I, I rang Brendan and I said, this dude is staring us down. So Brennan rang the police. Police didn't come straight away. They waited until nine o'clock at night because he had rung them so many times about us and stuff like that. Brennan's pretty much like knows police and that in town because of the line of work that he's in. He has a lot of dealings with them. And so they never ever came here for anything. But they waited until nine o'clock at night. And then knocked on his door. And I mean, when they knocked on his door, I jumped in my room because their front door is near my bedroom. It scared the bejesus out of me. And then I re and I could hear what was being said. And <laughs> the police basically got up him for being a perv 
and said if he didn't um, if he didn't stop doing it, he would be arrested next time. So we never seen them out on the back veranda after that. And um, it was just because, you know, like Nera Lee's out in the backyard. I don't care if you're perving on me. I don't care. Not that there's anything to perv on, but... You know, if you can, you can be as creepy as you want with me, but as soon as my kids are out there and you start making my kids uneasy, I start to get a bit narky. And so anyway, and that's what I said. I, I was very narky about it and Brendan was not impressed about it because it did make Nerali feel uncomfortable. The final straw came, which was absolutely ridiculous. I have never heard of anything so ludicrous in all my life. This guy and his wife, in their infinite wisdom, rang the council. Now, mind you, we never complained once about their excessive noise for their renovations or anything like that. We are not complainers. We do not care um, that people have to do stuff. They're going to make noise. Have at it, you know. Like, they had the entire time they lived there, which was six years, six years it was, six years, yeah, six years that they lived there. The entire time they lived there, they were renovating. So six years of construction noise. So generators, nail guns, um, people coming and going, painters on scaffolding, um, fencing getting done, like you name it, it was getting done. They basically renoed that whole house and it took them six years to do it and it was constant because a lot of it he was doing um, and so... And then builders would have to come in and redo what he'd done. And he had overcapitalized in the house. So in their infinite wisdom, I, I, I'm almost curious to know how long they sat there before they came up with this idea. They had the audacity, the council thought it was hilarious, they had the audacity to ring the council here. Um, now, the local council, for those that don't know who are from overseas, I don't know how your country works or whatever, but we have a local council and the council governs what happens in the South Burnett. So they take care. We have local council, state council, then federal council. So these are government departments. <clears throat> and so the local council takes care of our region, which is the South Burnett region. All right. Now, the South Burnett region is out of a city. It's nowhere near a city. We're three hours from the closest, two and a half to three hours from the closest city in any given direction, right? So in their infinite wisdom that and the audacity of them, like, I was sitting there and I'm like, are you for real? Like, the council could not wait to get on the phone and talk to Brendan about it. Anyway, um, they rang the council. They told the council that they were putting their house on their market because they couldn't deal with, with us anymore. I don't know what they couldn't deal with because we're pretty quiet people. Um, we don't have cars here getting revved or anything like that. We don't do that here because this is where we live. We don't want to irate our neighbours. And um, the worst that we do is we park on our front lawn. But as I said, we have a very narrow and anybody that's been here knows how narrow our road is and um, how dangerous it is to have your car on there. And as I said, people have got windows um not windows, mirrors knocked off and stuff like that. And um, scratches on cars, you name it, it's happened. And so, yeah, so anyway, they rang the council and said that they had had enough. They're putting the house on the market. They were asking 400 and something thousand dollars. And um, if they don't get that 440, I think it was, thousand dollars, they were going to sue the council and sue Brendan and I for loss of income. Now, Brendan's also been a real estate agent as well and he's pretty good at real estate and calling the market and whatnot and he told he basically the council rang and told him what was said um like what they had said to them and all the rest of it and um I overheard that conversation and I can honestly say there was lots of laughter um on both sides <laughs> we still laugh about it now and um yeah so anyway <laughs> and uh I I said to Brendan I'm like I'm pretty sure that that he's going to waste a lot more of his money and he's not going to get anywhere because $440,000 for a house in Kingaroy, uh, in this part of Kingaroy, mm, no. You, he bought the house, like he was trying to double his money. Mind you, he overcapitalized in his house. He he overspent by $120,000. Odd um, they ended up getting... I think they ended up getting 
360, I think um, the council said. They got 360. So they fell short by um, 80,000. It may have even been less than that. The neighbours that moved, bought it off them are lovely. Um, they bought it on the internet because they were in New South Wales. And, um, like, you hardly ever, like, you don't even see, you hear the car come and going, but you don't see them. Um, and they've got a couple of kids and whatnot. The kids are, are noisy, but all kids are noisy. And that, and I don't care. I've got kids. My kids were noisy. And, um, you know, they've got a rooster that they shouldn't have, but we don't care. Like, we don't complain. And um, although it is funny when your neighbour comes and accuses you of having the rooster, I went, nah, it's your mate on the other side. Might want to go talk to them. <laughs> and he just looked at me and I went, well, I don't hang out with them. You do. <laughs> your mates. Go talk to them about their rooster. Um, that's not us. We don't have a rooster. And, um, yeah, so, but anyway, they they were dead set going to, like, and then the wife, she moved out. Be, I think she actually left the husband. But they, like... As I, as I said to to Brendan, I said they've had marital issues for a very long time because my bedroom is right near their house and they used to yell and carry on at each other. And the guy was a dead set idiot. Like some of the stuff he used to say to her, like I know who had the brains in the family and it wasn't him. And anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway being a little bit judgmental there, but, you know, you get that in some of the, you know, like we had put up with a lot from these neighbours. But then they left and then they were st they weren't even in the South Burnett. They actually left. So God help who they moved. I, I, I feel sorry for whoever they moved next door to. But they kept ringing the council and complaining about Brendan's signs in people's yards and all, like, and they knew it was him because he was ringing them from the same mobile number. And the council even said, we know who it is. It, it's the same people. And, that, and Brendan's like, oh my God, like what the hell? And like, even after they left, they're still trying to cause trouble for us. And it's just like, oh, seriously, these people need to get a life. And I felt so sorry for their daughter. Their daughter was such a lovely girl. And she used to, like, wave to the girls and stuff like that. They went to the same school. And, like, yeah, they were just they were full on, like, full on. And, you know, I even tried to talk to them and be nice and all the rest of it. They just had a problem from the get-go. Um, they didn't like the fact that our yard was messy and it was... And, <laughs> And it probably didn't help that when they did complain about the, the um, like, they wanted to replace the fence. And at the time, we couldn't afford to replace the fence. And we said to them, there is nothing, and there was nothing wrong with the fence. So legally, we didn't have to replace the fence because you, the only time that you have to come to the party on it is if there's a problem with the fence, it can't keep in animals um, if they've got animals or the fence is falling down. Now... Brendan has always maintained like it and it was a very old fence when we moved in here but Brendan's always maintained it and all the rest of it now they were hell-bent on putting in this color bond fence and we said look we cannot afford it and we couldn't at the time and um you know we had three young kids we're you know paying trying to pay our mortgage off really quick I was I wasn't working like I was only working from home and my money was just like a supplemental income Brendan was working away and, you know, we had expenses and stuff like that. And so we were honest with them and said, look, you know, we just can't afford a fence like that. We can afford and we don't have to actually pay for, if they want a colour bond fence, we don't actually have to pay for it because the council bylaw says that you only have to pay the amount for whatever the fences are in the neighbourhood. Now, in our part of the neighbourhood, they're all those old school chain mesh cyclone fences. That's all that used to do. There never used to be fences all along this street um, for the backyards. They It used to be all open. And um, down the road, they've got a massive tennis court and they used to play cricket out here and all the rest of it. So the fences were all just, when they were originally went up, were just those old school cyclone fences, um, which look like chain mesh for those that don't know what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, so anyway, we only have to pay the equivalent of that because that's what all the fence and so the majority of the fences in the neighborhood are that so that's all we have to pay for well when we threw the bylaws at them 
because they were wanted this colour bomb fence and they said, well, we went and had a look at the bylaws and got some advice and all the rest of it. We went back to them and said, look, we only ha- we can give you this much because that's how much it would cost to um, pay for a fence that is the same. And, um, you know, when all your neighbours, that's what they've got and you just want to put a colour on. My neighbour on the other side, they've got a colour bomb fence. He didn't even ask us. He just, like, it was... That was nothing to do with us. That was be, just as we were moving in, they were finishing that off. So they had nothing to do with us. Um, and so we didn't have to pay for that. He just wanted a colour bond fence and he put the colour bond fence off. He didn't make it his neighbour's problem. But these people were like adamant that we were going to pay for half of a um, half of a fence. And we're like, there's nothing wrong with the fence that's there. Our animals are staying in. Your animals are staying in. It's not falling down. No one's going to get hurt by it. It's not a construction problem with it or anything like that. They just wanted to have a colour bond fence and they wanted us to foot half the bill. And because we couldn't afford it, we fought a little bit harder. And then when the council backed us (laughs) and said, well, they are within their rights. They only have to pay for a chain fence. Um, They spat chips. And we gave them the amount for a chain fence, which um, we got a quote from three different places and we went with the cheapest quote and because that was with well within our rights and we only had to pay $900. Um, and this is going back quite a few years now. So, um, yeah, it was a while ago. And pretty much from that day on, they wouldn't even look at us, wouldn't talk to us or anything like that. And... You know, like it was not that we didn't want to help them out. It was that we couldn't help them out. If we had the money there, and even Brendan said, if I had the money there, it'd be in your hands, mate. He goes, because a colour bond fence would look awesome. He goes, but I do not have the money. You know, I didn't sell a multi-million dollar property down on the Gold Coast and move to a country town. And um, and that's what he said, because that's, they told us that's what they did. Um, You know, they were talking about where they come from and all the rest of it and they'd come from the Gold Coast and they had owned a multi-million dollar waterfront um, place and they moved to King Arroy. I'm like, one, why? <laughs> like, you're on the water, stay there. Um, how much of that money they got and were in debt for, I don't know. I didn't ask and I don't, none of my business. But yeah, like they were very, very painful. They, they've probably been the most stressful neighbours. Like, And I've had all sorts of wonderful, colourful people from um, across the way. We've had Rip Snorton street fights and machetes come out and all sorts like, and that doesn't happen on a regular basis. It's just, you know, those neighbours are now gone. They go pretty quick once they start doing that sort of stuff, but yeah. Oh, sorry about that. My camera just decided to stop working, so hopefully this is all set up and in the same spot again. Um, So yeah, I was saying about my lovely neighbours and that they ended up moving away and Everything has been all happy ever since and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it's just um, fun, and, fun and games afoot in King Arroy. <laughs> I don't even... Yeah. It's a weird story to tell, really. <laughs> I don't know why I started telling... Oh, well, the motorbike that went past, that's right. And the neighbours and how crazy they can be. Oh, so, this week I've still got a fair chunk of stuff to get done. I've got um, I've got about six quilts in front of me i'm two weeks behind obviously because i haven't done any quilting for the last two weeks i just wasn't up to it last week either so i've i'm going to endeavor to at least get two of them done this week then they're only small ones so they shouldn't take me too long um i i'm feeling a bit today because in like Actually, I'm, I'll rephrase that. I'm not feeling bleh as such. I'm feeling guilty because on Friday night I didn't feel like cooking and I had um, pizza and I've been so good. Like I, I've i lost um, 10 kilos now. When I weighed myself on, on Saturday, I was at 10 kilos, even with my pizza on Friday night. And it was a vegetarian pizza anyway. Um, but I haven't. And then on um, Sunday, I just I had a blowout. And I had nachos and some potato gems. And this was over the course of a day. So the weekend, actually from Friday to Sunday night, wasn't a real good weekend for food-wise. And it's made me feel a bit, uh, like, not great because I've been eating so clean. Um, And there wasn't really anything wrong with that food that I ate, considering how healthy I have been eating. I'm just a little bit disappointed in myself because I have been 
doing so well but i'm back on track today i'm not doing it i i can say though that i have not had any soft drinks it is it has been eight weeks since i've had a soft drink and i usually drink like um coke zero that's that's really the only soft drink that i drink because everything else is just too sweet for me anyway because i don't have sugar or anything in my tea or coffee or anything like that so um <clears throat> yeah so i've done really well not a single soft drink in that entire time um i've upped my water intake um, I drink about 1800 mils to 240 mils, uh, to, to 2000, well, what is it? 600 mils my bottles are that I get, um, cause we need a new tank on the house. The, the tank that we've got, it's old and I don't know, the water, both Savannah and I, um, just felt the water was a bit, tasted a bit metallic and we don't know whether that was because we were getting sick. And I haven't been game enough to, to try it again because I don't like that taste in my mouth. I don't know anybody that does. But anyway, Brennan's been buying water and he doesn't like buying water. He hates it. Like he'll buy energy drinks and stuff like that and um, and then complain because we buy a bottle of water. Like, But that's what I want to drink. I want to drink water. So yeah, anyway. Um, and I was quite... I said, And I said to him, you know, I don't want to hear it because, you know, you buy your... Um, energy drinks all the time I uh, said you know at least water doesn't rot my teeth and rot my kidneys and do my liver do stuff to toxicity in my liver and all the rest of it and because uh, he's terrible for energy drinks although he hasn't been drinking as many as he has in the past he has got better um he but ugh, his sugar intake does my head in and that and it doesn't, you know, like he's one of those people, the more you tell him not to do something, the more he's going to do it. <laughs> so it's better just to ignore it and hopefully it uh, fixes his problem. But when he sees me starting to lose weight and get healthy and all the rest of it, he doesn't feel good about himself watching me eat um, lots of fresh food and vegetables and stuff like that. And because I won't buy it, like when I do the shopping, I'm not buying any of that stuff. I don't care. You want that stuff, you go buy that yourself. I'm not buying it. I'm not taking, putting rubbish. And he just, he gets so nice with me. <laughs> he just, he, you know, he wants to mouth off, but he knows he can't because he's standing there and he's looking and you can, you can see the cogs turning over and I'm just standing there and I'm like, I'm not wrong. <laughs> he just like, and he hates it <laughs> and I'm not doing it to be a smart ass I'm doing it for your own health like I am not going to buy that for I am not going to help you eat the copious amounts of chocolate and sugar and m flavored milks and all the rest of it I am not going to help you do that uh, so, and, and, I mean, it is a little bit selfishness on my part too because it's like mm, you know well I can't eat it you can't eat it either <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I'm harsh, 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 harsh. But anyway, I'm doing really good. I'm back on track today. I had a bit of a blowout, but that was the first real blowout that I've had in eight weeks. So since I went to the doctors and they said I had really high cholesterol and if I didn't do something about it, they're going to put me on medication. It's amazing what the threat of me going on medication does. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I haven't walked. <clears throat> I didn't get up and walk this morning. Um, I just don't think I'm there yet. I want to wait another week. Um, and I said as much to Brendan as well. I said, I'm just going to wait another week. And he said, yeah, wait another week. So um, I don't want to push myself and get sick again. So I'd much rather wait and just wait it out. And the doctor can say whatever she wants. She's not the one with short of breath and all the rest of it. So, and um I know that I'm doing. Oh, I know I'm doing the right thing by the things that I'm eating and stuff like that because I've lost ten kilos as of Saturday. Even with my pizza blowout, I still lost ten kilos. I think I've already said that. I'm pretty proud of myself because I've I haven't really done much exercise. That has just been purely we changing my mm, the food I eat and I'm not starving myself. I can assure you, I'm doing intermittent fasting and I can do that anyway because. When my thyroid went, I noticed that if I ate breakfast or when I eat food, I tend to get a little bit um, tired afterwards. So I, t I was putting off having breakfast anyway. So I haven't really changed anything except um, the food that I'm eating. 
So I'm not eating the same as what Brendan eats because he doesn't eat good food. He doesn't, he won't eat vegetables. The only vegetable he'll eat is potato and the occasional salad. Um, if I'm cooking, he gets salad every day because I'll put it on his plate. But then he'll go down the road and he'll, you know, he'll get chocolate bars and he'll eat crap during the day and all the rest of it. So, um, and I just, yeah, I, I basically used to like say to him, you need to start looking after yourself. You're not going to always be a spring chicken and be able to do the things that you like to do and all the rest of it. And he's one of those people who's just going to have to learn the hard way. Um, and as much as I love him and I want to do the right thing by him, I can't fight him every step of the way because that's just no way to live. So I just went, I'll focus on myself. As they say, if you're in a, in a uh, plane crash, the first person you should put an oxygen mask on to is yourself because if you're dead, you can't save anybody else. So <laughs> that's a little bit grim. <laughs> but anyway, I basically am just looking after myself at this point. The girls know how to eat healthy. Um, Neralee sends me her list of what she wants to get in the shopping and I'm happy to buy it for her because it's predominantly healthy. Savannah, she is a bit like her daddy and she likes to fight me every step of the way. And like her teeth, she is now learning the hard way. Um, oh, for those that don't know, Savannah is doing, getting massive amounts of work on her teeth. She's got beautiful straight teeth, doesn't need braces or anything like that, yet won't look after them. And you can only fight with a child so much about cleaning their teeth before they have to learn the hard way. Well, she's had a tooth extracted in the last, in the last um, two months. She's had a tooth extracted. She's already had three fillings in the other teeth and she still has another three appointments and each of those appointments have two and three fillings on um, that so guess who's brushing their teeth right now and doing the right thing and drinking all the water and not drinking sweet drinks and all the rest of it and I just looked at her I said your mother knew what she was talking about huh seeing the dentist is now sitting here saying it and they've got qualifications so maybe now you might listen <laughs> and the dentist said she's right <laughs> so yeah but anyway I'm gonna call it a day on that note <laughs> and I'm gonna take my pompous self <laughs> off to have a drink of water and get on with the rest of my day i hope that you all have a lovely day and get lots and lots of stitches in thank you so much for joining me today if you like this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up down below and leave me a comment in the uh, comment section and i would like you today if you've made it this far and listened to me prattle on to leave me a butterfly in the from the emoji selections in the comments below and if you have made it this far and um you've obviously liked what you've heard because you've stuck around make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and um i will see you all again next time bye for now